Welcome back to The Unnamed Project, where today we play Wheel of Timing. Let's give her a spin. Oh, technology, I tell you. So try again. Indeed, I must. So long story short, I had, oh, I'm a little disappointed here. I had all this cam timing stuff for the big block Ford we're working on right now. Unfortunately, corrupt files, technology, this guy, who knows, man. But what I'm gonna do, just for you guys, because I want good content for you guys, I set up another engine here, okay? So we're gonna go through the process quick just to show you basically what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna show you a few other things along the way, just so you guys kind of see where I'm going with all this stuff, right? So, okay, you can stay there, but you can stay quiet. So yes, like I said, a couple other things I'll just show you along the way. So for example, ah, not for example, let's just do it. Okay, so what we have here is a Pontiac 400 engine, right? If you guys are Pontiac fans, stay tuned. This is coming up. Um, I've gone ahead and just mocked this up, right? So there is a rotating assembly in here. I put the cam back into it. I put the cam straight up. We'll go a bit more into that later on. Then afterwards I installed my degree wheel and I have a magnetic dial indicator over here. So you can just see it kind of out of frame a little bit here, but I have the faux pro set up there and I'm gonna show you basically what I'm doing. The first thing I need to find out is where my top dead center is. So you can't just willy nilly slap this on, put the pointer on and then just say, hey, yeah, cool, I'm at top dead center. There is actually a process to do it, right? The way I like to find top dead center is to get a common point before and after while marking where these are on the wheel and then you split the difference and then you can tell where your zero should be, okay? It'll be a little, it's, I know it doesn't make quite a lot of sense there. Don't worry, it will though. So what we're going to do is we're gonna pick an arbitrary number. Let's say a uh, hundred thou, right? So once um, I see the apex and I drop back down a hundred thou, I'm gonna mark that on the wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. My dial indicator is already set up and we're gonna start turning this. Try to zoom you guys in a little bit there. Might be able to see a bit better. You kind of see what's going on. There we go. To make it a little bit simpler, we're going to go just a little bit less. We'll go 10 thou, okay? So... We got the dial in mind. The max it reached is 30 on this dial. There you go, that's a 10 thou difference. So 10 thou up there, we're gonna take our number down here. So we're at one, two, three degrees. Now we're gonna chase that 10 thou again, but the other way around. We're aiming for the 20 here. There we go. So what do we got here? We have five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18 and a half. So we got here, we have 15 and a half degrees because you have to think about, I'm taking my 18 because I'm on the same side of my top, my zero on my scale here. So I'm gonna subtract that. So now I have 15.5 degrees, the halfway point of that is going to be, all right, so seven and three quarter degrees. So if I go to seven and three quarters on the actual dial, 
on, sorry, onto uh, the wheel here. Nine, no, eight, there we go. So now if we split the difference, I know the engine's at top dead center. So at this point here, what I'm going to do is to take my little rod that I've screwed on and I'm going to readjust it so it's at the zero point on the pointer, or correction, it points at the zero point on the wheel. There we go. So from my point of view, this little pointer dingy dongy thing there points perfectly at zero. So I know I'm at my top dead center. The next thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to check something called deck clearance. So deck clearance basically is how much the piston is below the deck. That one's actually pretty simple. All I'm going to do, again, we are on the dial. I'm simply going to measure the surface of the deck and the flat surface of the piston in the middle point. So. Okay, so this is the piston. And now I'm going to rotate to the deck. This is the deck. So now we know that we are 30 and a half thou in the hole. In the hole is just the expression that we use. Also have this written down. I'm gonna need this later on when I start putting the engine a bit more together and start calculating the compression ratios and all that good stuff. But don't worry, that's gonna come later on. Okay, that's top dead center sorted out. Now what we're gonna do is just measure out where the intake center line is. So this one's actually pretty cool. I do like that one. Okay, this setup is a bit more complicated. So I couldn't get a GoPro set up on the dial. So hopefully you can see what I'm trying to achieve here. I went ahead, I put a lifter in and I made sure it's on the base circle of the intake. Okay, you have to know which one your intake and your exhaust valve is for this because you can mix it up and get the um, exhaust valve center line, not the best. So I'm on the base circle, my dial is set to zero. And the way that I go in there is I put a push rod into the lifter straight in line with it, right? What we want to do here is to find out where 50 thou of lift is before and after the lobe. So the way the lobe turns in, right? So we're going to start turning the wheel. And what that's going to do is it'll get past the base circle, right? The way the cam is designed and then it'll start pushing up onto the push rod. And when we get to 50 thou of lift, we're gonna record that number. So enough talking, let's get her done. So again, we're on the base circle, nothing should be happening here. All right, I can see that the lobe is coming here. I'm gonna start paying attention. And there we go, we can see it's starting to go up. There's my 50. So my number on the wheel is 5, 10, 15, 16 degrees after top dead center. So I know my dial indicator can't do the whole lift, it'll get pushed out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out the other way and then I'm gonna pick up the slack again. So now I went past and I'm gonna come back down. So just picked up the slack. And bam, so now I'm at 50 the other way around. So I'm gonna take the number on the wheel again and record that. Always double check your work. I was trying to figure out why something didn't work here and I just found out I suck at math apparently. All right, so like I was just saying, uh, we have our 180. This wheel here is a little bit weird, but you have to understand how it works. So our 180 plus 10, so 90, 200, 210, 217. Relatively easy after that. All we do is we're going to add our two numbers together and divide them by two. So our intake center line is at 116 degrees and a half. So do I like that? Maybe? One cannot simply watch and not subscribe. I decided to go through this anyways because uh, I'm realizing that some people might not exactly get the terminology of what I'm doing here. So when I'm saying top dead center, when I'm saying uh, IVC, when I'm saying static dynamic compression, we're just going to do a quick little overview of this, right? So 
TDC top dead center. Let me introduce you to my product, by the way. This is our cylinder. And this piston will represent a piston. And then we got our valves here and all that. You get the picture. So TDC is when the piston is at the upwards most of its travel. It can't go any further than that. That's why we call it top dead center. There's top dead center and there's bottom dead center. I don't use bottom center much, but it's still out there. The next one, I'm gonna go over static and dynamic compression. So static compression is when you simply do the math of what's in here. So what I mean by that is the size of the bore, right? So the diameter of the piston, the stroke, which means how much it physically travels up and down, the size of the combustion chamber, the thickness of the gasket, and the size of the dish or dome in the piston, right? So we do all the math, and in a perfect, perfect condition, that means if the piston is all the way down and the valves are fully, fully closed, that is our static compression. So in the case of this truck, the static compression is at 10.2 to one, okay? Dynamic compression is a little bit harder to calculate, but there's a lot of like little formulas and calculators out there. I just use the internet, it works perfectly. So what that refers to, it calculates the compression from the moment both valves are actually closed. Let's say this is bottom dead center, the piston can't go uh, any further down, and then it starts to come back up slowly. Well, in most cases, one of the valves is still open. So in my case, I'm after the intake valve. So this piston will go up a certain amount before this valve is actually closed. When we're talking about performance cams and whatnot, scavenging effects, all that good stuff there, science. Oh yeah, a lot of science, physics, all that good stuff. Back to the subject. So dynamic compression is a formula of all that, and then a calculation from the point at which the valve, both valves are actually closed, then all this is calculated, and that is your actual compression, your dynamic compression. Why is this important to know? When you want to get as much power as possible, you have to accommodate whatever fuel you're planning on using. I mentioned this already. I wanted to make this engine a bit more pump gas friendly. The way it was set up already, my dynamic compression was at 8.55 to one. So in theory, it would have been good for premium 91 octane. On the edge, but still it would have been good for it. Uh, in practice, it wasn't actually. The engine was running really good in the RPM, like I said, but at bottom, it didn't have anything. It was knocking, it was, it was terrible. What I wanted to do was to change my dynamic compression, which is what we just did. Get a bit more into that. By changing the valve events, this is when we're talking about advancing, retarding. We can advance or retard the intake valve opening and closing, sorry. So if you advance it, advance earlier, sooner, right? The valve will close sooner and then your dynamic compression will increase because now the piston will travel more with both valves closed. Your dynamic compression increases, right? That's the problem I had here. My dynamic was too high. So what we just did was to retard, retard later, later event, the valve closes just a tad later. In our case, uh, four degrees later. So the piston has to go up a little bit further four degrees further when we're talking about rotation, on, rotation of the crankshaft before the valve closes. And that will adjust my dynamic compression to 7.8 to one. In a nutshell, that's pretty much what we did. So just keep in mind, if you were advancing the cam, advancing sooner, earlier, you're closing the valve earlier. And then if you're retarding, retarding later, slower, right? It will close the valve 
slower. So you can adjust a little bit um, in consequence of the fuel that you have, right? A consideration to keep in mind though, you can only move it one way or another so much because eventually what you start having is an issue where the valve will open either too soon or one of the valves, sorry, will open either too soon. So when you're all the way up, if you're too far advanced, your intake valve is gonna try to push into your piston before it has a chance to start coming back down. And then consequently the other way around, if you're too far retarded, the same thing is gonna happen with the exhaust valves, right? There's a way of checking that out. Basically what you do is you go 10 degrees before and after top dead center. You can check both the valves. You put a little checking spring in there and you put the dial indicator on top. I like to keep 100 thou. Some people go as far as 80 thou. They're a bit more ballsy than I am. Well, that's all the time we got for this week. I really hope you guys appreciate this one. I tried to make this video a little bit less uh, dense, I'll put it that way but I have a feeling it still ended up pretty dense. There's a lot of knowledge when it comes to this stuff. I don't have all of it. Uh, I use a lot of other guys. People like, uh, again, Steve Morris, amazing dude. This guy knows what he's talking about. Insane. <sighs> I, uh, I can't wait to fire this thing up. I could just feel it. I can summon this thing starting on its own. It's insane. Anyways, your man Porter here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll see you soon.